Matthew records an encounter between Jesus and the Pharisees in which they came to test Jesus in Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. They were trying to trap him in what he said. So they sent some of their disciples with some of the Herodians to question him, and they prefaced their question with flattery. They said, Teacher, we know that you are truthful. We know that you teach the way of God in truth and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any, Matthew 22 and verse 16. Though they had evil motives, their statement about Christ was true. He taught the truth regardless of how some might react to it, and we should strive to emulate the Lord's attitude as well. But their question designed to trap Jesus was this, Is it lawful to give a tax to Caesar? They probably figured any truthful answer might be able to be used to accuse Jesus of some crime. They knew that Jesus would give a truthful answer and not sidestep the issues like others might. But Jesus knew their evil hearts. He knew their intentions. And he gave them a truthful answer that they could not use against him. He asked for a coin that would be used for the tax. Upon receiving the coin, he asked this question, Whose likeness or whose image and inscription is this? Matthew 22 and verse 20. And they answered, it's Caesar's. Well, Jesus first told them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Though Jesus came to establish a kingdom as evidenced in Matthew 16 verses 18 through 19, his followers were still expected to be in subjection to the governing authorities, Romans 13 and verse 1. Since Christ's kingdom was a heavenly kingdom, the citizens of that kingdom could submit to his law and that of the earthly rulers, provided they did not conflict, Acts 5 and verse 29. So they were to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. But how would they determine what belonged to Caesar and what was due to him? Well, Jesus asked for a coin. The coin bore the image and the inscription of Caesar, therefore it belonged to Caesar and was due to him. He told them to, though, render to God things that are God's, Matthew 22 and verse 21. But how do we determine what belongs to God and what is due to him? Well, much in the same way that we were able to determine what belonged to Caesar. That which bears the image of God and the inscription belonging to him. Friends, we were made in the image of God, Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27. As Christians, we wear the name of Christ, who is the Son of God, Acts 11 and verse 26. And we have his law inscribed on our hearts, Hebrews 8 and verse 10. We are to render ourselves to God because we belong to God. We are to present our bodies a living and holy sacrifice, one that is acceptable to God, Romans 12 and verse 1. And while we are expected to give back a portion of our material blessings to the Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and 2, we are able to give acceptably when we have the attitude of the Macedonians who first gave themselves to the Lord, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 5. Paul reminded the Corinthian brethren that as Christians they belonged to God. He said, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 through 20. Those who questioned Jesus could not believe what they were hearing. They were amazed by this statement. And some today might be amazed at the great sacrifice that God expects of us. But friends, we cannot be pleasing to God if we will not serve him completely. Matthew 6 and verse 24. We need to render to God that which belongs to him and live our lives as a sacrifice to him. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. We pray that the Lord blesses you with a wonderful day.